don't know, if you're not sure that Yahweh is his name, Yahuwah, you know, he's your dad. He knows that we're living in the shroud of darkness right now. What did Paul say? We all see through a glass darkly. We don't know. But can we get two things right that we do know? We do know that it is written that love Yahweh with all your heart. Love your creator with all your heart. If you don't know his name, you're not sure. Love your fellow man as you love yourself. And you shall live. That is the SAT test to enter into heaven. That's all you got to do. Every day, make every action that you do be a reflection of your loving that person that you're interacting with as you love yourself. Would you want someone to treat you like you treat other people? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, Yeshua said. When you pray, pray in this way. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses like we forgive everybody else. Holy smoke, that's a contract, I tell you, that's a contract that we all signed. But how many are truly living up to the terms of that contract or have we breached it? I've breached it. But you have to catch yourself when you breach it and say, I'm sorry, Father, I repent of that. I forgive that person. So many Christians have unforgiveness. We have, we're filled with unforgiveness. Look at how many Christians want to kill Muslims. They want the entire Muslim world to be destroyed. Men, women, and children with depleted uranium. Look at Michelle Bachman, evangelical Christian uh, Huckabee, evangelical Christian. These people talking about Jesus. How they love Jesus. They're church going, born again, evangelical, spirit filled Christians talking about let's go kill some Muslims and destroy their land, pollute their land with depleted uranium. That's what they're saying when they're saying we need to go bomb another country. They, these were the same people that said we need to go bomb Afghanistan. So the Christians went and said let's go bomb Afghanistan to go get Osama bin Laden. Well, as many, after they've killed and maimed and destroyed many people that have never been a uh, terrorist, they're just a bunch of Afghani people that never even heard of the World Trade Center, yet they suffer and die because Christians say we must bomb them because they have no forgiveness. They have, they're filled with vengeance. We want revenge. Ooh, and Yahweh saw that back in 2001. Shook his head. It's on now. The judgment of the American Christian began September 11th, 2001, when Christianity said, I don't care if it was, a, I don't care, you know, I'm not even going to discuss whether it was an inside job or not. That's irrelevant. It doesn't matter if it was an inside or outside job. What's relevant is the response to it. The response to it was vengeance. Whoever did it, we were told it was 19 Arabs from uh, Afghanistan, Osama bin Laden was in uh, Afghanistan, from Saudi Arabia. So we, he takes a vote, he asks the people, he tries to get the people, Bush tries to get the American people in his corner, let's go get them. He builds up vengeance, revenge. We, this was a revenge. He exploited, what Bush did was exploit a human weakness that Yahweh had already mended by saying, vengeance is mine, not yours. Christians did not want to hear it. They don't want to hear it today. Today, they want to go bomb Iran. 
and Iran has done nothing to the United States of America. If we start bombing Iran, I'm telling you right now, it's not going to work. We're not going to achieve decapitation, regime change, all that. Um, what will happen is the Iranians will respond, and we will feel the pain instantaneously. But what it will do is this. It will unleash the nuclear genie. And so for all those Americans out there tonight who say, you know what, taking on Iran is a good thing. I just told you if we take on Iran, we're going to use nuclear weapons. And if we use nuclear weapons, the genie ain't going back in the bottle until an American city is taken out by an Islamic weapon in retaliation. So tell me, you want to go to war with Iran, pick your city. Pick your city. Tell me which one you want gone. Seattle, LA, Boston, New York, Miami. Pick one, because at least one's going. And that's something we should all think about before we march down this path of insanity. Meanwhile, the drumbeat against Iran continued today at the highest levels of the U.S. government for that alleged plot that sounded contrived to a lot of people, like a Hollywood movie plot. Well, Moscow's warned Washington against striking Iran. Russia is not afraid of a possible U.S. attack on Iran. We're just trying to predict the consequences of such a move. If I understand correctly what you said at Wednesday's news conference, Moscow is trying to warn the U.S. against such a move? That's correct. We've been warning against attack on Iran. We hope that they will now listen and understand all the possible consequences of an attack. The United States can't beat a bunch of Afghans with sandals on and light arms. They're not going to defeat the Chinese. Think would, the U.S. would lose a war. The would, U.S. would lose a war. They can't win in Afghanistan or Iraq. We must also understand that this uh, action against Iran is also indirectly targeting two main countries, China and Russia. Uh, which have extensive uh, military cooperation agreements with Iran and consequently this has to be understood as part of a global war. If there is uh, an attack on Iran, I think we must understand that we are potentially in a World War III scenario. You see how they are exploiting the apostasy. These people have fallen away from the truth that Yeshua gave to us. What does he say to do with our enemies? Love those who do harm to you. Do not return evil for evil. Love your enemies. 
you try to you try to put that into some of these zealot Christians' heads. We have to go kill, maim, and destroy. Islam is an anti-Christ religion that intends through violence to conquer the world. And I'm very honored today to have one of the truly great leaders in America, a moral compass, a spiritual guide, Pastor Rob Parsley, who is here. The fact is that America was founded, I'm going to stagger you right now, America was founded in part with the intention of seeing this false religion destroyed. Mohammed received revelations from demon spirits, not from the living God. I want to say thank you for being here. I want to thank you for, Rob, for your kind introduction. America has historically understood herself to be a bastion against Islam in the world. For your leadership and your guidance, I'm very grateful you're here, sir. In fact, I'll tell you this, I do not believe our nation can truly fulfill its divine purpose until we understand our historical conflict with Islam. And I want to assure you, he should be talking, not, not me. When it comes to Islam, now the greatest religious enemy of our civilization in the world, it's dangerous. We were built for the battle. We were created for the conflict. We get off on warfare. And so for all those Americans out there tonight who say, you know what, taking on Iran's a good thing. I just told you if we take on Iran, we're going to use nuclear weapons. And if we use nuclear weapons, the genie ain't going back in the bottle until an American city is taken out by an Islamic weapon in retaliation. So tell me, you want to go to war with Iran, pick your city. Pick your city. Tell me which one you want gone. Seattle? L.A.? Boston? New York? Miami, pick one, because at least one's going. And that's something we should all think about before we march down this path of insanity. something that we could coherently call a country based on our social and historical traditions it doesn't exist anymore i believe and i'm going to say this that the united states is in a process of rapid collapse as a democratic institution and that a large part of its people or most of its people are suffering from some form of self-denial to the point that it's insanity i think the a lot of americans have literally gone insane <laughs> 